name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so good to see you on this beautiful Sunday morning. My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor here at Cook's, and we offer you our welcome, those who are here in person, those who are joining us live stream. We, I'm going to try not to talk too horribly fast, but we've got a lot uh, to share. So, uh, all of the folks who uh, worked the Habitat for Humanity build yesterday also went home with all of their appendages and all of their fingers. I don't know that they can move very well today, uh, but it was a great day, and I'm sure the new homeowners uh, are excited about all that um, we were able to contribute yesterday. Uh, so thank you to those of you who helped and those of you who helped feed uh, the workers as well. It was a great collaborative effort between those uh, dedicated uh, to mission uh, and believe you me, making a sandwich or uh, uh, a breakfast for somebody who is working hard is a part of that mission as well. One of the next things uh, that our mission team will offer us an opportunity to be a part of is Rise Against Hunger. If you'll remember, that's a meal packing um, uh, effort, uh, and it, it is a lot of fun. So don't do aerobics the day before, uh, but when you come, it, I mean, it is a lot of fun. So uh, Eric has already posted uh, some sign-up sheets around uh, everywhere. Um, so this is an extra, but uh, if you've got a time slot that's preferable to you, if you're available for both of them, that's okay, too. We just want to make sure everybody has a chance to serve. Um, what? Um, okay, so I forgot to write the date down. It's in, it's the, towards the end of November. What is it? The 23rd, is that with a question mark? Okay, somebody check it for me, if you don't mind. It's, it's supposed to be the Saturday before Thanksgiving, and that's the 23rd. So now, now that we're clear, November 23rd, that's your opportunity. Uh, it, yeah, it's a great, great opportunity. Today is also the beginning of uh, four weeks of focusing on um, the gift of stewardship. We call it a gift because God has given us an opportunity um, to uh, be partners with God in how creation is managed, encouraged, taken care of. Uh, this is not a money focus. Oh, you can think that if you want to. We're going to talk about money some, but that's not all that um, God requires us to be stewards of, invites us to be stewards of. So up at the front uh, in uh, on the table, but also in the gray basket that's in the chair are workbooks. They're companion guides for four weeks of practicing generosity. I want you to think generosity of your time, generosity of your energy, generosity of your skills, your experience, your ability, generosity of positive thoughts, uh, generosity of everything that we have. And there's a little letter, uh, a short note, that's inside each one of these to help you. That way, even if you are practicing, running this practice as a single person or as a couple or a small family, then you can do this at home. Now, it's going to require some work to be accountable to yourself. Uh, don't wait until Saturday to cram like you're cramming for a test because this is about practicing generosity. And we will, as a part of every week, start with looking intently at how God is with us. You'll understand a little better as we go through our teaching time today. But today would be the beginning of that. We need to make sure that you have submitted your uh, email address uh, so that we can give you access to the videos. Uh, so read that little note. Pick up your little, well, you have to pick up the guide to read the note. But you, you do it in whatever order you want to do it in. Uh, but we will begin today as the first week of practicing generosity in the same way that God is generous with us. We hope that you'll be um, with us on this journey. Now, I do want to say this. Some of you are um, overachievers. 
and you're going to wor want to work ahead. Uh, and okay, are we doing this again? Uh, great. Okay, so just as an aside, um, we think my titanium knees interfere with the microphone down in Friendship Hall because nobody else has problems with it. So who knows? It could just be my electric personality, uh, but I doubt it. Uh, so here's what I want to say. One more thing. Please don't, f you should have or should be receiving an estimated giving card to participate in our budgeting process for 2025. Please don't fill that out ahead of time. Would you practice with us at least two or three weeks? And in case you discover something new, you learn something new about God that changes how you think about what you will commit yourself to, we want to be as open to the moving of the Spirit as we possibly can. So thank you already for that. Okay, uh, very quickly, here are the last ones. You ready? Time change next week. You can come early if you want to. Some of us will be here. Uh, uh, but come on, time, time is changing next week. It is also All Saints Sunday, and we want to kind of recreate just for our time in worship that cloud of witnesses. So those people whom you will be celebrating uh, and grieving, missing their presence a little bit, would you bring a photograph to put on the altar Try to not bring one in a frame, but just bring one that you can leave there. It doesn't matter that everybody doesn't know exactly who that is, but just leave it here on the altar and we'll make room for all of them. I can guarantee you a picture of my daddy will be there uh, and a couple of other friends as well. So as we celebrate, look forward to celebrating All Saints Sunday. Bring pictures of those um, to match the pictures you carry in your um, mind. Charge conferences at 1 o'clock. We're going to feed you. Uh, not to bribe you or I anything, but I know there's a lot going on, uh, but we want to make it easy for you to come and to celebrate. That will be about an hour meeting, tops, as we celebrate what 2024 has held for us and look forward uh, with our district superintendent to what's happening in 2025. Lastly, we started this Wednesday, live stream devotional on Wednesday morning to join FCA here in Wilson County with Wilmore Wednesdays. Uh, Debbie uh, introduced uh, a couple of us to this. Do you, if you know Butch, you know the name Butch Wilmore? Yeah, well, we're remembering, uh, he's doing fine, uh, but his family probably misses him. They thought it was gonna be an eight day trip and it might be February before he's back. So uh, we're committed to pray for him, but not, uh, not only for his safety and for their protection, but also for God to use this uh, surprising experience. And so we'll be gathering online, live stream, and then you can find it later <laughs> if 8.30 is not your time. Um, do I need to turn one of them off? Okay, well. Check. There we go. So 8.30, live stream, Wilmore Wednesdays, and there will be a prayer list. If you would bring your prayer concerns or celebrations, type them in uh, either during the live stream or following by Thursday morning, go back to that same post on the Cook's Facebook page and you'll see a list that we've made from our community. Whew. It is a joy to be a part of the family of God. We hope that you'll find a way to join with us in that. But an even greater gift is this hour that we have together. Oh, we're so glad that you are here with us, whether in the building or whether you are joining us in spirit. Let's worship God.
Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> you please join with me in prayer. Good morning, God. We come together again as your family. Some of us with glad hearts, some with sad, some with hearts, and maybe even some with confusion. We ask that you be with us during this hour and help to give us all glad and open hearts to hear your word. Amen. If you'll stand and join with me in a call to worship. God visits the earth with abundance. Praise be to God for the blessings which enrich our lives. Make us stewards of your creation, sharing the abundance. Teach us to share and help others. We praise you for the gifts and ask your guidance in sharing them. If you join with us together in the hymn on page 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, words are on the screen or in your hymnal. <coughs> If you'll turn to page 884 or on the screen, we'll say the Korean Creed. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, man of man our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God, obtained in the Old and New Testaments as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God, 
as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God, where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the ev everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 12. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity and will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you Edna. As we uh, begin these uh, four weeks discovering the joy uh, of giving, we, we must uh, do business with this. H how it is that Jesus presents the very kingdom of God, that he starts his ministry with that invitation. Uh, the kingdom of God has come near. A and as Paul, uh, one of the most prolific writers of uh, the New Testament, works, reminds us that God's kingdom is an upside-down kingdom. What I mean is, as compared to the world that you and I live in, the economy of God's kingdom is very different. And though we know intellectually that when we belong with Christ, that we are in the world, but we are not to be of it, how in the world? Do we do that work? Uh, uh, here's how different uh, the world around us is. Uh, we are consumeristic and we are transactional. That's the way the world teaches us. Uh, if you were a, a, a video game or a, a, a game fan before, can you imagine Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man? Waka, 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 waka. We go through life eating up. Every experience, everything, every opportunity, every task, every day. For our pleasure to, to get what we want, uh, to achieve what pleases us, it's as if the world really is our oyster. Yet that is not the way Jesus built relationships. That's not the way Jesus sees the world. That's not the way Jesus knows God to be. Instead, from the very beginning, it was God's idea that we have an opportunity to participate in and with the divine. Let us make humankind in our image. Let's give humankind responsibility and privilege for caring for 
all of creation. And so our relationships and how we give, how we receive, surely, but especially how we give is not because we have earned something or that something is due us. It is an investment in the goodness, if not the restoration, of what God intends. When you and I see our life in this world as more than just transactional, what I can get for what I've got, or how much I can squeeze out of these days that God gives me, we learn about our brotherly or sisterly responsibility and privilege with one another. It's as if our money, our moments, our energy, our skills, our abilities, our experiences, our opportunities, those are all tools. They're not possessions. They're not treasures for us to hoard. They are tools for the building of the kingdom. There will be times when someone needs to invest in you because you had a low spot. You're going through one of those seasons. And then there are those times when you and I have the privilege of investing in something else, someone else. There, there were tons of opportunities to fill your Saturday with, yet there were a few who decided to help build a home for someone who has never had a home of their own yesterday. And there were those of you who were so glad that your brothers and sisters would be willing to do that, that you took time early in the day to make sure that they had the nourishment their physical bodies would need in order to do that work. That's the kingdom of God, the upside down way, but really it's the right side up way. And Paul, if you caught it, when Edna read our passage of scripture today from his second letter to the Corinthian Christians, names three attitudes around giving. It's very interesting that he chose this three because I made a list of way more. I'm not going to give you that list. Uh, but the first he mentions is reluctance. When you look at the Greek language, you had not heard that in a while, have you? And when you look back at the Greek, the uh, reluctance is really about giving out of, like we're talking of something interiorly, uh, giving out from something to something. Well, your response to that a bit of wisdom might be, duh. It, isn't that the kind of giving we always do? But here's the notion, is that there is a separation and a disconnect when you and I are reluctant. We, reluctant. we don't want to give because that means we're losing. I'm giving up something when I am a reluctant giver. And a compulsion... He mentions that attitude around giving as well, as if somebody else is making me. You give or else. It's an, there's an outward influence or pressure that is exerted. Uh, a sense of guilt or shame would qualify as those forces. Well, I don't really want to, but I'd rather do that than to reap the consequences of the not giving. Okay, well, I am going to give you one from my list uh, because I, I wish that Paul had said this. Maybe this wasn't an issue uh, in, uh, in Israel or the Holy Land at this time, but I think for us, we have such abundance and are not even aware of it that you and I sometimes give without thought. It's a friv We have no respect for the gift or the one to whom we give. And by one, I don't mean just mean another person. It could be uh, an institution, a cause, and it's not just about pennies or dollars. It's about our energy. We give things away as if uh, they're mere crumbs. We give no thought for what we are 
participating in. Reluctance, compulsion, thoughtlessness. You see the list could go on and on. Uh, And you will be the only one who can say for sure what your attitudes around giving are. My guess is it depends on who's asking, why they're asking, and when they're asking. Except if you are one of those, the cheerful givers. There is joy in giving. That's what Paul wanted to say. That's what Jesus lived. That's who God is. And when you and I become joyful givers, cheerful givers, we are ready to act because we are already persuaded. We are looking forward to giving, so we're already inclined. It's as if we have our hands in our pockets, or we've already got a clear space on our calendar. We are already prepared for the interruptions that will come to us in life in this world because we know there will be grace in this act, in this opportunity, in this relationship. That's why God loves a joyful giver. You're already convinced that this is the way to live. To live with open hands, not wanting, but willing to share. Now we'll talk in a week or two about how it is that we realize we, we really have the privilege of sharing because nothing is ours before it's God's first. But I I want us to uh, take one step deeper. God is able to bless us. Did you hear as Edna read that for us? God is able to bless us abundantly. I'm going to ask it for us, but is God willing? Paul said it this way. God is able for all blessings to come to all of us in abundance That way we always have enough of everything. Do you get the point that he's kind of going overboard? But he's not going overboard. This is who God is. God will give us everything. I'm going to prove it to you in a minute because he already has. But it's the why And the what of our receiving that is in question. I want to give you a picture of God's generosity uh, that we have from Scripture. I I can't tell your stories, but I hope that you will. Uh, Recount them for yourselves. Tell them to your family and your friends as we practice generosity generosity together in the next four weeks. I, I hope that you'll tell those stories from your own life because this is what happens when you and I are willing to participate with the divine with the divine then we are choosing to be a part of the abundance that will continue to grow and how you and I answer that question is God willing to bless me depends on the picture you see of God's generosity Is he persnickety or is he free-handed? You decide. I believe that what Paul tells us, that God is more than willing, not just able, but willing for each one of us, is proven time and time again. Think about the parable of the prodigal. Only recorded in one gospel, just a point of trivia for a moment. Which gospel? Can you guess? Oh, Luke is the only one who tells that story. The parable of the prodigal, and we think first of the prodigal son. That word prodigal means wasteful. The younger son blows his inheritance after he had the audacity to ask daddy to cough it up. And whenever he had squandered every last penny, embarrassed the family name, he was ready to come back groveling and ask dad for a job. Instead, daddy welcomes him home and gives him access to the remainder of all that he has. 
the God character in that story gave in abundance. He gave his money. He gave freedom. He gave forgiveness. He gave grace. He gave love. He gave companionship without counting the bottom line. God's generosity. And sometimes God's generosity is true. We just don't want it to be true. Do you remember the parable that Jesus told about the vineyard workers? Some were hired at blah, blah, blah in the morning. Some were hired a couple of hours later. Some were co- uh, hired a little closer to noon. The hiring went on all throughout the day. Uh, those first dudes hired to work for Mr. Man uh, agreed to compensation. So when they saw that the fellas who only worked an hour got the same pay, they expected that they would get even more. When that didn't happen, not only was their boss for the day a dummy, but he was mean and irresponsible and just downright rude. Yet those who had not been hired who had no plan for how to put food on their family's table, were wondering how it is that they would survive one more day, were pretty glad for someone who was generous with all that was his. Creation itself is evidence of God's generosity. God could have stopped with just wrens or crows. But no, 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 no. We got flamingos and eagles and hummingbirds and buzzards. We got blue-footed boobies and uh, lorikeets and owls. And if you look at each one of those underneath, there are dozens, if not hundreds, of other varieties. The same is true for crops that we eat, for the kind of weather that we get, for the colors in all of creation. God is a God of abundance and of generosity. He gave us those things for us to enjoy. And he also gave us the privilege and responsibility of caring for it so that we would understand what a miracle it is. Did you know that a tiger's stripes are not just the color of their hair? You shave a tiger bald. Now, I don't know how you would pull that off, but you shave a tiger bald, their skin reflects those stripes as well. Did you know? Well, I know you already know that our fingerprints are all very unique. Did you know that you don't ha- you have the only tongue print like yours? I, I, I don't know how they figured that out, but evidently your taste bud pattern, whether your taste buds are working or not, the pattern in which they lay on your tongue is different than anybody else. Why? What difference does it make except that God is a God of variety and a appreciates that kind of variance in things and he wants us to know what miracles we are, what miracles hummingbirds are and flamingos and tigers and palm trees. Just in case you hadn't gotten it yet, I I, I want to point to something that Jesus did while he was here. Uh, The feeding of the multitude. All four Gospels record this story. The fishes and the loaves of that little boy's lunch fed over 5,000 people. One Gospel includes two feeding um, miracles. And by the way, just if you get hung up on the numbers, the 5,000 didn't include women and children, you know, because we used to not count. Uh, but all Jesus did was have them sit down in an orderly pash, uh, in an orderly pattern, and he blessed God for the provision of that little lunch. He blessed it to the glory of God, and it fed everybody with twelve baskets left over. Now, an important point. 
it did not become, in the blessing of it, an all-you-can-eat buffet where not only could you have fish, but you could have ribs and steak and mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. It didn't become anything other than what it was, but what it was was more than enough with more to spare. Everybody ate their fill. And others could have eaten had they been there. That is the miracle of abundance, the kind of generosity with which you are loved and with which you are accompanied by this God of the universe. So let's think about Jesus himself, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. First of all, do, you do know that Jesus is his name and Christ is his title, that he doesn't have like a first and a last name for us. Christ was the promised one, the anointed one, the one who would be the Messiah. Emmanuel, his name that reminds us that God is with us, that meant Jesus left the glory of heaven. He left it to take on potty training, teenage angst. He had to wrestle with the question too, what in the world am I going to do when I grow up? He walked right into misunderstanding and rejection like you have with family and friends and those that you have depended on to be your safety and your buffer in this mean old world. And he did it so that you could, if you choose, be in right relationship with the God of the universe. That, my friends, is generosity. That's the way God is. That's who God is for us. And so you want to bicker about whether God is willing or not? What more do you need from God? It's as if when you and I get to that place where we feel like something is lacking in our lives, well, I really wanted ribs and not fish. But the willingness of God is to make sure that we have all that we need regardless of our recognition, regardless of our appreciation, and regardless of our response. That's how we know that there is joy in giving. God would do it again and does do it again and again and again regardless of our response. But as an apprentice to Jesus... We have an invitation to become a cheerful giver because we believe that there is great joy in the giving. That there is, we know that there is great joy in the giving. It will cost us something on the calendar, something of our energy level. It will cost us something from our pocketbook. It's going to cost us something. It won't cost us near what it cost God to love us back to himself. But there is more joy in giving than in receiving. My prayer is that you will dare practice generosity this week with a little different perspective. That you will uh, choose to be generous. If you're waiting on feeling like it, it won't ever come. But when we choose to be generous, as God has been generous with us, oh, what joy will fill our hearts. May it be so with all of us. May it be so in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Our hymn of response is to look at the very uh, goodness of God, but also the vastness of his goodness. Uh, you can remain seated. Uh, let's sing together, How Great Thou Art.
our ushers will come forward, please. This is the time that we can give our gifts of tithes and service and offerings to God. Merciful God, you open our eyes to your truth and we bring our gifts to you with gratitude. We bring our offerings as a response to your call, a step in faith to follow you more closely. Use these gifts to spread your love and light, helping others to see your grace and mercy. Bless our giving, open our hearts to see the needs around us so that we may serve with compassion and humility just as you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for leading us. Uh, the gift of love. Um, I'm not sure if you know this or not. Do you know the movie The River Wild? Long time ago. Is it Glenn Close, I think, played in that? No, or Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. The gift of love is the opening song. Um, and there is an absence of love in uh, so many parts of that movie, but what a, a foretaste of what God will do for us 
if we would but open our eyes and receive that. Thank you, ladies, again, for that. I want to draw your attention to the prayer list. Um, Concerns and celebrations uh, both. Our sympathies go to Rachel and her family in the passing of her sister, Cynthia. That was quite a surprise, but Cynthia has been on our prayer list for some time. She had an uphill battle for sure, but we celebrate a life that was well-lived and a difference that she made in so many others' lives as well, and we want to be in prayer for you. I do want to offer um, a a celebration uh, of sorts uh, as well. We um, we have an opportunity uh, to be a part of uh, the forming of little minds down the street at West Elementary uh, as a part of the reading program. It's going to require you being generous with your time uh, to be able to do that. And and your patients, uh, who are we kidding? Um, but uh, and we have plenty of openings for that. But we have an invitation to be a part of a public school day where we get to help children know that somebody stands beside them. And I am um, tremendously grateful uh, for that. We are also, um, you and I, uh, all all of us come into this time with a mix of uh, the gratitude that we hold, the questions that we still have, the burdens that we feel on our heart, the sadnesses that we have, and it is joy uh, in its essence that we can share together. Would you join me as we go to God in prayer? Lord God, as we think about your magnificence, how you are all of everything for us. You are all powerful. You are all knowing. You are ever present. You are ever working toward your children's good. There is no one, no thing greater, more loving, more hopeful, more hope-inducing than you. So many days we confess that we run right through all the hours as if we've done something to earn them or we're owed them. We complain about not having enough, not having enough time, enough energy, and not having enough money, not having what we want. And when we allow our focus to be distracted from our brokenness, uh, from your holiness to our brokenness, we will never have enough. But every moment that we are given by you, O oh God, is already filled with abundance if we would simply open our eyes and allow your spirit to soften our hearts. Thank you for the witness day in and day out that you have given us even when we have not acknowledged it. The colors of the changing season, the crispness of the breeze, the fun of families gathering together to celebrate a new season. In all of the ways that we experience your presence in our lives, to think that we have uh, filled most of our responses to you with, well, I wish it had been ribs, or I wish that it hadn't have been fish. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us for treating you as if uh, you're the goody bank. Forgive us for treating you like you owe us something. Forgive us, Lord, for disrespecting your holiness. And like spoiled children demanding that Just a little bit more would prove to us your goodness and your grace. Give us the courage not only to recognize how it is that we are so blessed, but to be courageous enough to bless others to the same extent. Remembering that we call ourselves by your name, O Christ, 
to learn how and who you are. We sing so often, we, they will know we are Christians by our love. Make that be true. In your grace and in your mercy, by your pardon, would you restore us to right relationship with you, O oh God, and make of our lives the evidence that the world needs that your kingdom is upside down from theirs and it is filled abundantly with your goodness and your grace. Make of us the evidence that the world might come to know you. And we pray this audacious prayer in the name of the one who gave himself for us. And so we pray the way Jesus taught those who would follow him to pray. Hear us as if we had one voice, one heart, one mind, as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we close our time of worship uh, here this morning, we'll be using um, a hymn I trust that you uh, know already. I take my life and let it be. It's the first opportunity we have to respond as a body to the generosity of God with our own generosity uh, and gratitude for him. Uh, don't just sing it because the words are in print in front of you. My hope is that you and I both can sing it from our hearts and from our minds as well. And if God is doing something in you, is uh, beginning to reveal to you that there is something more for you to be a part of, I hope that you'll reach out to someone, let us pray with you, or let us walk with you in these days that we might discover the fullness of God's generosity and return it by love. If you are able, would you please stand? If not, um, feel free to keep your seat. But let's sing together, Take My Life and Let It Be.
we hope that you'll take an hour to rest. It is a joy for us to be um, included in this upside down kingdom. It is our privilege and our responsibility to invite others to trust in the goodness.